Welcome to Decades of Horror, the 1970s. No! The Beast has no brother! Don't call me your brother! This is episode 135, recorded March 10th, 2021. Gruesome Magazine. I am your host, Doc Rotten, and this podcast is about horror films released between 1970 and 1979. Each episode, my co-host Jeff Moore and I will take a look at another classic or not-so-classic film from this wonderful, wondrous, groovy, gory, and influential decade. With me this week is my co-host, Jeff Moore. Jeff, how are you doing, sir? I'm doing good. Um, I, I haven't been in an elevator for over a year. You haven't? That's be- <laughs> well... That has nothing to do with the movie. I'm I'm certain. Uh, I guess well, we should. It does, but it doesn't. Yeah. yeah, I guess we should say we we are reviewing tonight. Damien Omen Two. Uh, Electric it, Boogaloo. Yeah, it actually has no preposition. There is no the in it, even though I keep putting the in it. But it's just Damien Omen Two. Go figure. All right. Also joining us tonight is Bill Mulligan, writer, director, special effects guru, and all around nice guy. How you doing, Bill? I'm doing great. I haven't been in an elevator, a movie theater, a mall in a year. Yeah. So, but this was fun. I'm glad you picked this because uh, it's been a long time. So, always yeah, fun to revisit something. It's interesting. Yeah. Because it was my pick this week. I picked uh, Omen 2, and everybody groaned. Yeah. No, I, I think I was one of them. But yeah. No, the, I reassessed it. Yeah. This is definitely not a film that's on people's uh, must watch list, but we're going to discuss it because maybe you shouldn't be overlooking this film. All right. Also joining us is Chad Hunt, comic artist and co-host of Decades of Horror, the classic era. How you doing, Chad? I am great. And uh, I know uh, in our chat when we were figuring this this out that we were going to do this, um, my pick before was Godzilla versus Mecha Godzilla. And you said, well, I'm doing Omen 2. Take that, Chad. <laughs> I still have to. I'm still trying to figure that out. Why? Why I should take that? Yes. yes. <laughs> but I'm glad to be here. I'm there's glad probably be here. there's probably a reason in there somewhere. But yeah, uh, yeah, uh, so we're going to be talking about Damien Omen Two. The first time was only a warning. You, you had to know that, right? All right. It was released on June 9th, 1978, in the U.S. of A. Directed by Don Taylor and also Mike Hodges, who is uh, uncredited, but. Yeah, there you go. Writer, uh, the story was uh, crafted by V. Bernard, the producer. Uh, written screenplay by Stanley Mann and Mike Hodges. And based on characters created by David Seltzer. Yes. Uh, the cast includes William Holden, Lee Grant, Jonathan Scott Taylor, Robert with a T. I don't know where the T went off to, but hmm. it's hidden in there somewhere. Foxworth. Nicholas Pryor, Lou Ayers, uh, Sylvia Sidney. You're going to recognize her. Uh, Lance Henriksen, Elizabeth Shepard, Lucan. Lucan. I think it's supposed to be Lucas. Why is it Lucan? It is. Maybe it, it is. What, what the Lucas heck happened? Donut, yeah. Lucas Donut. Not Donut, but Donut. And Alvin Urbis. Uh, or Alan Urbis. I, you know, I should just give this up. <laughs> I just I can't I can't do this. All right, uh, the synopsis is Damien, the Antichrist, now about to turn thirteen, <laughs> finally oh, learns of his destiny under the guidance of an unholy discipline disciples as well of Satan. Meanwhile, dark forces begin to eliminate all those who suspect the child's true identity, and that is the thrust of this story. Literally, that's what we're doing. We are eliminating anybody that suspects Damien <laughs> yeah. from the beginning to the end. We could have just said he's about to turn 13. I mean, that's that's scary enough, but he's also yeah. the Antichrist. Oh, man. Yeah. Yeah. Now you really didn't need the Antichrist in the, yeah. in the yeah. 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 We were all there, right? So, yeah, well, um, yeah. yeah, yeah, okay. So, um, <laughs> you know, so some of the other taglines <laughs> Bill Mulligan threw in here. Uh, the eyes will follow you wherever you go. You will experience a new dimension of fear. Or will I? Yeah. These eyes will follow you wherever you go. Your nightmares will become a frightening reality. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so, what, what are these? I, so, I guess there was a poster that had eyes on it because I, you know, otherwise, that what eyes are we talking about? Here? Well, th- there was one with the close up of the crow with the eye. Yeah. 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 Wow. I think okay. you, I think you even have it on one of your things here. Let's take a look. I think it's that one there. 
Yeah, okay, I'm moving around, and those eyes are completely not following me at all. No, you know? no, but that, that ruins the... Now, I, I do like yeah. that bottom poster, which I'd never seen before. Uh, I always saw the top one. I thought the bottom one was pretty cool, but I can see why they went for the other one. Simple and... Yeah, yeah. It also reads better on the newspaper because back in the day, oh yeah, that's where, that's where you oh, saw them. All right, yeah, uh, the budget was a whopping six point eight million dollars, and it grossed in the U.S. Uh, twenty six million uh, with a three point eight million opening weekend. That's not too shabby. They, no, they, well, they got the money back. Doc, that's one of those things. I, I listened to the uh, the uh, commentary from the producer. He said it was four million, and. I saw five million someplace else. So who knows? Who knows? Uh, Hollywood a, accounting. Yeah, it's all true. Mm. It's all true. It is. But it sounds like One you made a another. profit. So I don't know. <laughs> you know, they said it was they were disappointed and and everything. But I mean, you made a profit. It wasn't a money. I know. I know. Any sense. I know. All right. Yeah, the disappointment might have been in the critical reception because this movie didn't exactly you know wow everybody like the Omen. That because the Omen was yeah. a monster. Yeah. It was a monster. I mean, it it rode the wave mm. of the Exorcist, but it was its own thing, its own beast, if you will, mm -hmm. uh, and certainly has its own place in cinema history and history of the 70s as well, as far as, as, as films go. And, uh, and well, I think uh, 78 was the year of really bad sequels, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. Didn't we get... Did we get the episode two? Yeah, I, th two? I think, yeah. I think so. Yeah, I think, yeah. Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And uh, probably the tenth airplane movie, and <laughs> some of the other ones. Uh, but anyway, so we're here to talk about Omen Two. Uh, so what we're going to do first is we're going to kind of talk about our first experience with it. When did we first catch it? What do we think of it? Uh, then we're going to shoot shit about the movie a little bit because that's what you do with Omen Two, and then we'll wrap things up at the end. Uh, but uh, I am excited to hear what everybody thinks of this movie because for some stupid reason. I like this movie and I don't know why it's kind of bad, but I kind of love it. Um, mainly because maybe because of the cast, but let's find out about the rest of you. Uh, Chad, you're in the right corner, left corner up there. So I'm going to let you go first. Well, when did you first catch this movie and what did you think? Um, actually out of all three movies, the first one I saw was the final cut. No. <laughs> so, but I had I had no idea anything. I knew the Omen existed, and all those movies existed. But I think I got tricked into going to the movies to see the Final Conflict before I had seen the other ones. That's so strange. I went. Yeah, yeah. very strange. But <laughs> that's such is my life. But anyway, I I went back and I rented Omen, and then uh, later on Omen Two, and the Omen blew me away. It just blew me away. I, I thought it was an, an excellent film. Very, uh, um, I loved it. Loved The Omen. So when I rented The Omen 2, for some reason the tone was a little bit different. Mm -hmm. I don't know if it was, um, I don't know. It, it seemed like the beheading scene of David Warner in the first one, some some execs, execs sat around and said, let's think up more crazy ways to kill people. Yeah. And stick Damien in in there. That's what it, it felt like to me. You didn't feel that danger of the Antichrist, and you didn't feel that um, even though they were there, the the people that would surround him and protect him and stuff like that did not seem as dangerous for some some reason. And uh, his uh, was it his cousin Mark. Mm -hmm. um, that was an interesting dynamic between those two. Um, so I didn't, you know, and the kills were kills were pretty cool. Yeah, I have to admit, the the kills were pretty cool, and um, but I just didn't feel that dangerous vibe that I got from the original Omen, and uh, so I don't like it as much as as the original. But I still, it's an enjoyable, fun film to watch, you know, because of all the kills and everything. I, the, the acting was not that as great, I didn't think, um, except maybe uh, Lance Hendrickson did a good job. Um, and I, William Holden didn't do it for me in this movie. He just didn't have that gravitas uh, that Gregory Peck had and, and that um, 
I don't know, the weight of that role that Gregory Peck had that just didn't translate over to William Holden very well for me. But it, it's still a, it's still a fun movie. Like I said, the, it had great kills in it, and it uh, just wasn't to me wasn't as scary. It was fun, but it wasn't as scary. Yeah, that's that's absolutely true. <laughs> it's absolutely true. Yeah. All right, Bill Mulligan, you are up next, sir. When did you first catch Elman Two, and when did you uh, think of it? I saw it whatever the week was that it was released. And that was the last time I saw it until a few days ago. So it's it's not a film that I felt uh, a compulsion to go revisit, really. If I if I wanted to see an Omen movie, I'd probably watch the first one again. But uh, I remember it was okay. It, it, I, it had kind of, it was like a TV movie version of the first one. Yeah. But I'll tell you this, revisiting it, I wasn't like, oh, boy, when I heard we were going to do this one, it's like, oh, yay. Um, but actually watching it again for the first time in, oh God, how long I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it more than I thought I would. It was better than I remembered it. I thought the performances were, were pretty good. There was some, there was some things that were underdeveloped. The idea, this, what this movie reminds me of is the boys from Brazil, which is a, a much better movie where, you know, the antichrist doesn't even know he's the antichrist. And there's this conspiracy around him to kind of, give him opportunities to become what they think he's going to be uh, and, and stop anyone who's, who's a threat to him, which, which is interesting, but I don't think it was, it was played up enough. Um, we didn't really see a whole lot of the struggle, you know, maybe if the character had maybe resisted what he was or, you know, uh, and, but I did like the, the Robert uh, Foxworth uh, uh, character who's like buying up all the food and everything. So they're, they're setting up, this that Damien, when he comes of age, will control the food supply of the world. Okay, there's some interesting political stuff in there, and I think they were very clearly setting it up for a third movie that would maybe explore these more. Which just you know that that film didn't come. We got we got later on. We got the other one, but um, I think it's underrated. I think it's kind of fun. There's some good kills. There's a great cast. I, I do agree that William Holden doesn't have the same power that Gregory Peck did. I never I never really felt that he was going to be a match for the forces that were against him. Uh, he just seemed really pissed off, whereas Gregory Peck really looks like someone who could march to the gates of hell and put up a good fight. Lose, mm. but put up a good fight. Mm. And William Holden just looked like, and I was like, okay, this guy's not going to, he ain't going to be in the sequel. So um, it's, it's, it's an interesting film. Definitely lesser and, and kind of an odd, little, oddly directed. I mean, when you look at the two directors, you got the guy who did Flash Gordon and the guy who did Escape from the Planet of the Apes. I'm not sure what film I would expect from either one of those guys. Doesn't look anything like Flash Gordon. It's probably got a bit more of a Escape from the Planet of the Apes yeah, vibe. Yeah. Where you're, I was thinking it did, yeah. Yeah, you know, you're taking an existing thing and kind of running with it. It's serviceable. Ooh. It's it, you know the direction is serviceable, but it certainly doesn't have the imagery that the first one had. That was really well directed. Yeah. So it suffers from the comparison, but I definitely think it's worth a look. Yeah, I mean, you you look at Escape from the Planet of the Apes, and you can argue that's the best of the films, but even it isn't as as memorable as the first film, right? Yeah, right. Just right. just because, but when it gets down to it, the yeah, there, there there's a there, there's an argument there. All right, Jeff Moore, you are up next, sir. When did you first see Damien Omen 2, and uh, what would you think of it? I don't know. I think I saw it in the theaters, but I don't – I think I was disappointed. I mean, I know I saw it back in the day. I don't remember renting it. So uh, it's theater. That's my final answer. Um, <laughs> <laughs> nice. I was, I was probably chemically altered, so that might be why I don't remember. But um, – mm -hmm. That, that would the, happen in the uh, 70s. Yeah, yeah so <laughs> I got um, – when we when we did The Omen on here, then I went ahead and bought – I think it's a four-pack. I mean, Chad said Omen 3, but I think there's four, isn't there? Yeah, there's a fourth one. It was Lucy, a TV movie, wasn't it? Yeah. <clears throat> um, but anyway, um, yeah, and I, and I watched them then. And so watching it again this time, you know, I'm, I'm in Chad's camp. It's uh, – I felt like it just – lost something and I, I during it i the music the music in the omen is incredible yeah the music in this one just wasn't doing it 
And I don't know what the difference was. I think they're both Jerry Goldsmith, right? Mm -hmm. uh, so I, I'm not sure why, what happened. Um, I'm also a little, so, so you were talking about the directors, Mike Hodges, the last, the film he did before this was the terminal man, which oh, is like a that. very stylish looking, yeah, really good looking movie. And I think from what I was reading and what I was hearing on the commentary that he was wanting to do something similar to that with this and incorporate more artwork and, uh, uh, that the, the, the producer just wasn't having it. And so he mm -hmm. hires in, uh, is it Don Taylor, which was a buddy of his. So, mm -hmm. which, you know, uh, uh, neither here nor there, it's, you get, you get to do that, I guess, when you get the yeah. money. So, yeah. um, but like stuff like that red dress, that was Mike Hodges. And every time a scene came on in the commentary, the, the, the uh, producer bashed that dress. Talked oh about how God. much he hated that dress. It's just so out of place. A reporter would never wear a red dress like that. They would stick out too much. Blah blah blah. Just on and on. And on. <laughs> it's totally cool. Uh, I thought it was cool, and I think yeah. that you know when I uh, when I look back and think about it that way, then it sort of hits me. The guy's name is uh, is it Harvey Bernhardt? Mm, yes. Um, is the uh, was the producer that was on the commentary? So, uh, and then things like the 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 birthday cake. You know when they went to cut the birthday cake. Mm -hmm. there's there's like a scene like a like a, a frozen lake or something with kids on it or ice skating those are dresden china dolls and I, that was apparently something mike hodges also did and and uh harvey bernhardt threw a fit about that um oh god can you oh, that cost two thousand dollars look it's hardly even on the screen i'm like well i don't know okay. did mike hodges shoot that scene he might have yeah. I, I don't know. So anyway, it, <laughs> I I would have liked to have seen the movie Mike Hodges was going to make, I think. Um, I don't know if it would have been better or not. It definitely would have been different. Uh, and then this this producer also made a comment about when you have to make sequels, you don't go bigger. You tone it down a little bit. And, really? and I'm thinking, so now I see what, what's, uh, what, what happened, I guess. But anyway, yeah, it's got some great kills. I think William Holden did cool. The, the actor I liked the best, I think. Besides uh, Leo McKern, who I always love, is uh, oh, what's his name? Um, Nicholas uh, Pryor. Pryor. Yes. That, that that played the guy that that uh, uh, kind of figured it out. He has he has a train accident. <laughs> yes, that's a great one too. Yeah. Oh, it is. God. It is. And wow, he I thought he did a great job playing a guy that went from like just sort of the uh, buddy gopher kind of guy you know, for William Holden to, you know, trying to get a point across to him. And, yeah. and although, although I gotta say, if you, if you know that the, you know, Satan has you in his uh, crosshairs, you don't go to a rail yard. And you're dangerous <laughs> you on especially a, on a don't stand road. on the tracks. No. Yeah. Uh, well, he was, he was, he was right, totally right up behind by the car him. and stand away a little way. Yeah. Yeah. Well, he was distracted well, the, by the, uh, the car, right? So, yeah. Yeah, well, and that. I and I, I I hope I'm not getting too far out of first impressions, but the but the producer also was not happy with the uh, age that they should have been high school age because you can't. What can you do with 13 year olds? You know, they're barely, you know. So I don't know. <clears throat> um, I I will say, my mom was a seventh grade teacher, and she used to say, seventh graders are just the cutest, nicest people, but once they get in eighth grade, oh my god, oh. you know. So. <laughs> mm -hmm. I don't know. Is that where the, well, the puberty, I mean, the puberty yeah, stick say, hits them or something? Or yeah, puberty. I think is the right age to do this because that's when. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah, yeah. No, I, I got that. I got that. So, uh, yeah. So I enjoyed it. I don't think it's, it doesn't have near the impact as the Omen, but I, I think it's a decent movie and, and it is inventive in terms of kills. Yep. yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, so to be clear, this this really is a bad movie. I mean, it is not well constructed. Mm -hmm. It, I mean, plot wise, because it literally has no two Oscar, Oscar winners. Well, <laughs> in it or, or on it, I mean, the film didn't win the Oscars, <laughs> no, in it. Um, yeah, no, yeah, yeah, it I mean, okay, so that okay, I think both of them were probably cashing checks. I'm just saying, now I happen to love this movie, <laughs> don't get me wrong, 
uh, there's a lot of bad 70s movies, The Car, anybody wants to say that, um, that mm. I really love. And for some reason, this one fell into it. It, it grew into it. I remember watching it the first time, and, and I had that same reaction that probably everybody did. It's like, well, that wasn't the omen. You know? <laughs> but later on, I started really getting into how um, just some of the how preposterous it was. Um, I, I, the kills, I definitely love the kills. I love, you know, from the, the <laughs> you know, from the ant, the crazy ant to the, the, yeah. the, the reporter lady to, uh, uh, all the, uh, the brother, I think the brother, even though the brother has the least visual death, his is mm-hmm. probably the most traumatic because I think he performs the hell out of that screen. Yeah. He did a good job. That's a uh, and may not be be him, but um, but then out of nowhere comes Michelle Taylor and as Doctor Kane, and uh, yeah, before he was a side splitting actor in another show, he split sides in this movie. I see what you did there. Oh, uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, the elevator scene is is something you know it it yeah. happens like five times in front of you <laughs> because <laughs> you have to shoot it from it's, <laughs> you know it was definitely the you know if you know what's better than chopping off the head let's chop somebody in half that yeah. you know it's slow motion you see right. it over and over Re- again. repeated yeah so in a glass moment for this movie um, now it, it totally doesn't achieve what the first one did right because the first one right. when the glass hit everybody screams and hides their yeah. face and then when they look up it's still happening that's <laughs> what they were after right this yeah. it, this one didn't work that way it just didn't work you didn't see yeah. you know it it just didn't have that effect um although it's still an incredibly fun uh, a kill. Yeah. Um, I, I would have liked more of the crows in this, to be honest. I thought using the crows was, you know, mm-hmm. quite frightening, but you never had, um, it didn't have enough chanting, although it did have chanting. It didn't have enough, right? Because you remember like in the first one, you know, when the priest was running, you know, you, you, you get all the chanting, right? Yeah. Yeah. It's so much needed that feel that, that, you know, that mm-hmm, there was mm-hmm. a presence. You never really felt the presence. You kind of did when the crow showed up, but it it was like shock music, right? It was like, there's the crow, right? And yeah. it was, ah, uh, and I think we've grown kind of tired of that over time, but. Right. So this this movie is could frustrate a lot of, a lot of horror fans, but um, for me, the joy of it, I think is the cast alone. I, I think, William Holden, I, he was kind of cashing checks at this time. If you look yeah, at some of his yeah. roles around this, they, yeah, were, yeah. they were always kind of like, all right, I'll, I'll yeah. go chase a volcano. Um, and, uh, <laughs> yeah. you know, he's – but he, I thought he made a bull uh, – He, I believed he was Gregory Peck's brother. You know, he has that – that yeah. Hollywood gravitas. Yeah. That, you I know, can see the two of them being brothers. Sure. Right. And I thought Lee Grant was great. Um, I thought Johnson Scott Taylor, who, you know, isn't what I'm talking about as far as cast, but I thought he did a great Damien Thorne. Yeah. I thought um, he was really good. I, that's was surprised. I did not remember him as being particularly great in the role, but I liked it. I thought he had a, yeah. a creepy look without being obviously creepy. And he, right. was like the, he, he was looked like the kid in the first one. He, he did. Like, he looked like he was yeah, growing he, up from he, right. He could have yeah. grown up, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't think he would have grown up to be, you know, um, well, we won't get there. But I, uh, oh, What's sad is he, did, he really <laughs> didn't do very much after this because I think he did a good job. He acquitted himself fine. Yeah. And he could have had a career. He gone on to more stuff. Yeah. 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 I think that because it bombed, I think he was – he might have been blamed for it. Um, well, I think he, did, he, did, he did some TV really shows or something after that. But yeah. not. And the other guy, the brother, didn't do anything else. Yeah. yeah was, he I, the bro- was he the brother or, the, or his cousin? Mark. Cousin, I'm sorry. Uh, they were cousins. Cousin. They were yeah. cousins. Yeah. Okay. okay. Yeah. yeah. So they, right. even though this movie, you know, we talked about earlier, it made money. It was yeah. considered a disappointing box office. And, and and Exorcist 2 was another one. There was a movie called The Chosen. That was another one of these yeah. films. It wasn't a sequel, but. Those three, all three of them kind of tanked, and uh, that was the end. It signified the end of this this yeah. cycle, mm-hmm. um, even though we get it over and over again as you know years go by. Um, uh, but Halloween came out the year this year, right? Mm-hmm. And that, of course, uh, helped launch a whole new 
Yeah. John, I think, I think Damien too got unfairly tagged with this because I mean, exorcist Two bombed. I mean, they had less money at the end than they did before they released it. It was, it was a money loser. This one made a profit. It may not have made as much of a profit. And maybe that's, maybe that's because you had a producer who thought, Hey, let's, let's go small. Well, sometimes if you go small, you get smaller profits. Mm-hmm. Maybe this was the time to go big or something, but yeah, you certainly can't go small if you're doing like you know Fast and Furious and stuff like that, right? You got to yeah, right, right. I mean, like get bigger and bigger. Uh, but yeah, you know, I think he was confusing small with diminishing returns and went yeah. full. Uh, another really interesting thing about this is that um, it did give people nightmares. One person in particular was Steve Harris. If you guys know who yeah. Iron Maiden is, <laughs> uh, this movie inspired yeah, this one yeah. not omen but omen too mm. inspired uh number of the beast for iron mm. maiden so yeah I, I, well, I, go ahead go ahead uh yeah i, I would have thought i or had always thought it was just the omen not not damien omen too but mm-hmm. uh, and in the producer's defense he also produced lady hawk and lost boys so yeah he could put together a good good but movies. but yeah. uh, another mark against him he also produced the Goonies. That's right. I said it. The Goonies. Oh, I've never yeah, liked yeah. it. Never yeah, liked yeah. it. Send your cards and letters wherever the hell you want to send yeah, them. Mac? Mac, was it? Uh, yeah, you might have people way. sending you bad things. All right, so back to the cast. Love Robert Foxworth. <laughs> uh, we talked about Nicholas Pryor. Lance Henriksen's in this, although I didn't know who he was at the time. You no, know, I, forgot so yeah. I forgot he was in it. Yeah, I forgot he was in it. I never thought he was ever young. So it was a kind of a shock. Oh, it's kind of crazy. I, I almost believe that his voice was dubbed. It didn't really even sound like him. It um, sounded like his voice, but it still sounded like it? he dubbed Did his it? own voice on okay. mm, that. Maybe. Uh, but then Alan Arbus, who um, I don't know his name, but I remember him from MASH, right? It was, it was like one of those guys you remember. Yeah. Yeah, Sid, Sidney Friedman. Yes. Um, and, uh, and there's plenty of others. And we'll get to all of them, but I just – I don't, I don't know. They, they keep popping in and out. Some of them will pop in and die. Others pop in to kind of guide, you know, and you're, and you're trying mm. to figure out who's with them and who's, who's not. And it's, mm. it's fairly obvious if you pay attention. Yeah. <laughs> so there is, there isn't a surprise, but, um, and I don't know, was um, anybody else uh, confused by the ending with what, what did, what, what did, why did Damien do what Damien did? Why was that the choice? They, they they mentioned when they were talking about the the horror of Babylon or whatever that she would be rejected by the be you know that basically ah okay. yeah so she she's the horror of Babylon sorry mom but uh, okay. yeah well, and, wow but no I don't well, really understand I don't really understand why because she was you know on his side and everything. I think they could have they could have made it that maybe he wanted to turn his father maybe he wanted to have him come over that would have been interesting yeah or yeah. you yeah. know I, I expected that all these characters that you know lance henrickson and foxworth and all these others maybe uh the william holden character would actually be physically fighting them you know that if there had been more of a if, if they could have done something where the kid is torn between his good father and these bad people who know, you know, but who are offering him all this power and everything. I think there could have been an interesting story there. But yeah, that that yeah, that's what this film missed because the first one had that. The conflict was always with yeah, with and that's what I, right? that's what I was hoping for with the cousin Mark. Mm-hmm. That that mm-hmm. I was wanting wanting more out of that relationship than what ended up happening. Right. Yeah. More of a he would be like Damien's conscience or yeah, or Damien or, or something like that, and they are Damien. Damien would turn him and, and right. change try, the whole yeah, thing. Tr- I, I was hoping something more would happen there. That would have yeah. been interesting. Yeah. Instead, yeah. it's just like, you know, he, he very quickly turns on him. It's like, you're the Antichrist. You suck. And it's like there's nothing. Mm-hmm. He very quickly, uh, people are easily convinced in this movie. Look, here's a picture from 500 years ago. Well, I'm convinced. Yeah. 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 Well, I mean, yeah, that, that took a leap of faith to buy yeah, that picture, too. You know, like, I mean, they sold the story, right? Because the story is that this. This guy back in the day, you know, was visited by, you know, Satan himself and was shown the future and he painted this wall. It was somebody's mm. wall. I don't know whose wall it was. I don't care. But the, anyway, uh, it, the, the Giel's wall or the Gale's wall or something like that. There you go. Called. One of those names. But it did look like young Damien. I don't care. In, <laughs> in the world of cinema, I'm buying it. 
Yeah. Your, your face is on that wall. You are yeah. the son of Satan. Um, if I saw Jeff's face on that like wall, a, I'd have to look at Jeff uh, yeah. twice now. Yeah. Yeah, well, it certainly it, be nicer to him. In the movie yeah, world. They have glasses it, back then. There was no other, but, no other conclusion to be had. Yeah. But now, that, isn't say, that another place you don't go when there's a curse? Like you don't you don't go in the train yard, you don't go into the depths of an Egyptian tomb. Oh, I, yeah. I wouldn't go there anytime. No. No. But I that that is that is the scariest scene in the movie. Yes. It, it's so claustrophobic and it, it is. And, it's it being buried a lot slowly by sand, yeah. so you get to think mm -hmm. about it. You're not even being crushed by rocks, you're just uh, yeah, and those poor but, guys were really getting sand dumped on them. Yeah, I mean, yeah. tons of yeah. sand coming we're down. Coughing that out for weeks. And Boogan hanging, yelling out that prayer or whatever it is he's saying. I don't know what yeah. it is. He's just I mean, covered with sand. Wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he looks like he was eating the sand. You know. Yeah. Coming yeah. Down, so. Maybe it was um, cornmeal. Maybe they. You know. I don't know. Well, they claimed that he insisted on real sand. They did have something else they were going to use, and that he uh, insisted. Method on actor. It. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the only character, Boogan. the only actor ah. from the original movie, right? Right. Uh, right. Yeah, I right. guess he is. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I've never liked that in movies when they they bring a character from the last movie who survived and then kill them in the first ten minutes of the new yeah. movie. So I was like, it's oh. like, come on! I was like. Happy Good job that that surviving. Girl got away yeah. from Jason, and then mm. now you're gonna kill her in Alien Three. Anyone? Yeah. Oh, we will not even speak of Alien Three. It's just getting oh, mad. Oh my God! Uh, well, Jeff, what tell us about um, Leo McKern? I'm sure you there's got to be something about him. Well, I, I mean, the guy won tons of awards or nominations anyway for Rumpel of the Bailey from the Bailey. Is the, I, am I the only one that watched that British television series? Probably. Yes. Yeah. Do we have a picture of him? I thought I, I thought I made a. Oh, we should. Yeah, we should do the pictures. Where is it at here? I'm going to try to find it because I can't see them when yeah, they're tiny yeah. here. It'll be the last one we look at, of course. Yeah, some names. There he is. There he is. Now, this, Lady what's, what, yeah, it's going to He's this, in Lady Hawk. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Uh, what's this bottom the, picture? Uh, the bottom picture is he's one of the few characters to repeat as number two in one of my favorites, The Prisoner. Ah. Ah, classic okay. crazy ah. TV show. Yeah, but there, there he is yeah, getting yeah. buried by sand, and I don't yeah. know why, but that the whole thing just that really creeped me out. I guess I maybe it's the claustrophobia. In that yeah, I think so. And it's real too, because you know, even though you know, we know we're watching a movie and everything, you know, this is a guy actually on a set being buried by sand. You know, this this could go horribly wrong, and there's there's a reality to it that just yeah, that looks a little bit like the guy in Vampire. Doesn't he, Chad? Hmm. Uh, yeah, he does, doesn't he? <laughs> that was sawdust. Was that sawdust? That was sawdust, but yeah. yeah. Is this and the guy? The that other gets, guy. That's the guy gets buried with him, right? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And uh, yeah, He's I recognize in Captain Kronos. Yes. And and do you recognize the bottom pick? Yeah, Tales from the Crypt. A very that's spoilery right. picture. From very the... <laughs> spoilery picture. Yes. <laughs> Probably the best reveal in the movie. No, mm. maybe not. But it is a strong reveal. Uh, but yeah, he's he, is he the what is he in Captain Cronus? He's the the douchebag guy at the bar who uh, you know makes fun of oh, the hunchback yeah, yeah, and gets yeah, into yeah. the sword fight. And, you know, totally opposite of the way he played here. So he had, he had a good range. Yeah, yeah. Uh, well, okay. So Robert Foxworth. All right, you got the movie down below. This. Oh yeah. Uh, but I mean, he. Wow, God, he did a whole bunch of things. As soon as he walked on, and I, I got to say, I see it now. As soon as he walked on on the screen, my wife's like, "The guy who played Mike Brady is in this movie." I'm like, oh, no, yeah. but <laughs> I, I see where you're coming from, it's wife of girls. mine. Yes. Yeah. Oh my God. Uh, but he, yeah, <laughs> got that late seventies perm going there. Yeah. yeah. But I think most people would probably remember him from Falcon Crest. Yeah. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, but he uh, he he was in like all kinds of like little B films in the late seventies. Ants, Airport seventy seven, Death Moon, Prophecy, of course. Um, what was the Quester tapes? I like the Quester tapes. That was yeah. fun. That was a fun team. And, and he played uh, Victor Frankenstein, and the when in the Frankenstein two parter that was the wild wide 
world of mystery. I got to slow down to say Is that the one with Bo Svensson? And yes, Monster? yes, Bo okay. Svensson. Oh, yeah. Um, pretty sure. I, I liked him that. in this. He's, you know, you let top picture. He's got that intense look. He's he's clearly up to no good, but he's not twirling a mustache or anything. Mm-hmm. Um, he's intense and, you know, he, he has a reason to fear him. He's got a good look in the uh, the uh, ice the hockey game scene too, mm. when they're all running to save the guy. He's just standing back watching with kind of a look like that, you know, yep. waiting for him to die. That is one of the scariest deaths. That that one. That's one of the, the thing. The one thing I really took away from this movie that I remembered. I sometimes I forgot which movie it was in, but I remember because I grew up in upstate New yeah. York. We spent a lot of time on way too thin ice out there Mm -hmm. and the thought of being stuck underneath there and people can see you but you know you broke through the damn ice but now no one can get to you suddenly it's like concrete and uh but they can see you because they can see you yeah you can see them full of air and you're yeah that was a that was a heck of a uh heck of a stunt yeah for that guy because it really was a a guy a live guy under there doing that and then he pops up for a brief second Mm. Yeah, and he's gone again. And then he's gone for good. Yeah. down. Good oh, ain't getting away from Satan. Come on. <laughs> Not when you're underwater. You're, you're and, and so just like in Final Destination, Satan is a... And, 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 of course, this is completely in character. He's a total dick. Because if he wants to get rid of people, it's just like aneurysm. <laughs> Boom, you're dead. Okay, no fuss. No bother. Not this incredibly convoluted. You're going to go up an elevator. It's going to go really fast, and it's going to go really down. And just when you're breathing, whoo, got away. Here comes the cable. Mousetrap. You know, just, dude, just kill him. Uh, uh, the, the Satan has a sense of humor. He's Oh, yeah. He's got a dark <laughs> sense of humor. <laughs> there he is, Lance Henriksen. The man. Yeah, the man. He's sharp. Look at that. Those are the chiseled draw, man. Look at that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Not a crag on his face at that. Nope. Point. But now he went from chiseled to grizzled, and and yeah. still still great man. He is he he's a national treasure. My favorite role there at the bottom, pump, pumpkin. Ah, pumpkin pumpkin head. Head. Oh, it's yeah. my favorite role he ever did. Yeah. And uh, Frank Black from Millennia. Oh my God! Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, he's, he's he's one of the few that have faced off all the all the bad guys, right? The Terminator, the Alien. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, him and Bill Paxton, him and Bill Paxton. Yep. Yep. He's uh, and there he there is. He. There he is. Johnson yep. Scott Taylor. Uh, of course, the face in there is not Johnson Scott Taylor, but that's actually the kid from the right. The first, the first one. one. Yeah. With, with yeah. snakes. Now, if that would have been kind of cool if he had snakes at the end. Sure. Of the <laughs> but he pro- it probably would have ended up like Hammer's Gorgon. Oh, my know? God. Well, yeah, so never mind. That well, when you're a kid, that worked. <laughs> Ever score kid's... God worked. <laughs> you know this kid. <laughs> also, child watching actually, it. this one also he could have been in the boys from Brazil. He's he's definitely got that. Yeah. You know, kind of malevolent. Of course, the backlighting helps. Yeah. Never trust anyone who's always backlit. <laughs> no good. Then that means we can't ever trust anybody from a Steven Spielberg movie. No. No. <laughs> oh, no. Well, Everybody's backlit. That's just the yeah. truth. Um. Mm-hmm. The entire cast of the keep. <laughs> yeah. Uh William Holden. Um I'm trying to remember. I mean, William Holden, because uh, uh, when Time Rans Out was the movie I was uh kind of right, the volcano one. Yeah. yeah. And his last movie was SOB. Do you guys remember that comedy? Yeah. Oh yeah. 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 So uh what was it? Network was Blake Edwards. Network? Network? He was great network. In network yeah. Sure. The Wild Bunch. Galaxy like seventeen, uh Sunset Boulevard. Um I mean, he just he did a lot of classic movies, and and he aged into that. Star you know, Wars seventeen. I mean, and, and I mean this, and this mirrors his real life too. I mean, he was, it was a, a constant struggle with with alcoholism and things. You know, you you see, he had the ability to sort of convey that this man who's lived a long life, not always happy. You know, there's scars left behind, but there was always a likable quality to him. Mm-hmm. And uh, it was a shame when he when he died unnecessarily um but you know that's that's he came from that that's old school hollywood hard party hard drinking hard working not necessarily long lived that's one guy the uh, the producer was very positive about that he 
always knew his lines and he could switch effortlessly from standing on the sidelines between cuts or scenes telling a story and then when it was time to to set up it was just stop right in the middle of the story go do your stuff to come back finish the story without missing a beat uh yeah. and and do a great job just switch right over to that character you know it was, yeah. he's kind of playing the same guy here as he played in towering inferno though isn't he yeah yeah the corporate dude yeah 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 who isn't really as bad as you think he is yeah so i don't know he's he's a he's a classic i mean you know definitely these are these are actors you don't associate with horror movies now back then that's probably a lot of the criticism i mean i remember when omen came out even the critics who begrudgingly liked it were like oh gregory peck is slumming in this you know horror movie and it's like yeah they're not making the movies from the 40s that made these people famous they're older now and and you know it's cool mm. it's, it's not slumming if you give 100 percent of yourself to the character mm. to the role no but you, you're yeah. absolutely right you know the the horror movie had become like the the b movie right it had become more popular and so it changed in the 70s a little bit you know they started putting you know uh, names in there of course they so started usually, making yeah, money on them yeah, yeah. they're start, usually aging names um sure but they they definitely did that yeah I mean, yeah i mean this was the time when when the aging the, the the superstars of the 40s and 50s were now at an age where they're not being given leading roles in romantic comedies or anything but betty davis she could do scary she could do it, yeah. and, that, and that was well, ten years earlier, at least. Yeah, not twelve. I, I remember well, she was in Bird Offerings, which was right around this time. Yeah, yeah. Um, and and Holden, I think, was asked to do the Omen, and he turned it right. down. Right, he turned it down, and then yeah, he saw all the money it made. He probably made just a good chunk here, but the um, I remember arguing uh, with somebody about Lawrence Olivier being in Dracula. A few years later, <laughs> in the next year, right? Yeah, because you know that was there was somebody with some chops that shouldn't be in a horror movie. That was what oh, I but but listen, uh, that was that was a high point. He was doing crap like the Betsy or the Jazz Singer. Uh, Dracula. <laughs> it's not one of my favorite Dracula movies, but it's way better than the Betsy. He was making some grade A crap yeah, yeah. toward the end, and coming up with the doofiest accents too is the most enjoyable part of the movies. But yeah. yeah. Uh, but Lee Grant was a name. Um, I knew her from Trash, right? From like Airport 77 and The Swarm. <laughs> and Trash. But, I mean, really, <laughs> Which, right? The same year, right? Swarm? Uh, yeah, Swarm was the same year. The Swarm. Yep. Uh, Which I suggested at one point, and I got attacked by all three of you. So oh, yeah. For no reason. Yeah. Oh my we'll, we'll do it eventually. We'll do it eventually. Uh, I mean, yeah, eventually we'll have we'll get to it because we'll run out of anything good. But Disastrous boy. disaster movies. Yeah. We, yeah. 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 That movie is something. But uh I mean I knew who she was. I mean, I guess it was Peyton Place that made her name right, but hmm. um I could oh she was <laughs> she was in a show called Slyrees People. Cool. Um I I really I mean I, I couldn't tell you why I knew these people, but I knew who all these people were. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. For the life of me, thinking back, I you know I don't know why. Was it because they were on Hollywood Squares? Maybe. W were you a big fan <laughs> of like the talk shows, like the Mike Douglas show? Yes. Oh yeah. Oh show? yeah. Okay. Yeah, they, I, I'm pretty probably. sure Lee Grant was a permanent, you know, welcome guest on all these shows. Yeah. I, I feel like I've seen her come on and tell stories to Mike Douglas, and so there's someone you know. Yeah. Uh, even if you've never gone to see any of their movies, I mean, I never saw a Charo movie on my life. I oh, mean, I knew Charo was right. But I never saw her do anything except be on talk shows. Yeah, yeah. and game shows. Yeah, tell yeah. these long um, jokes that went nowhere. Yeah. Well, she was. She also won an Oscar. Um. So she was, and she wanted to be in this movie. That she was like, yeah, I want to. I want to be in this. She loved The Omen, so she wanted to be in it. Oh, I, th I thought she was great in it. I thought she was. Yeah, great. yeah she, she, was. She, she was. I mean, she played the you know what her role needed really well, mm -hmm. and uh, I loved the last. Screen she sold she it did. too. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Her last line is kind of like, <coughs> excuse me. <coughs> her last line is kind of like the uh, babysitter in The Omen. Yeah. She's standing yeah. perched oh, and yeah. is jumping to her death and hanging herself, and she says, "All for you, David." Yeah. 
<laughs> that's that's the other. That's not her. That's yeah. Yeah. Uh, let's talk about this. Oh, yeah. oh uh, Sylvia. Let's talk. Let's talk about the aunt. She's right? awesome. Oh my god, She's I loved best. how they they disliked her and she disliked them and she knew Damien was a piece of shit right off yeah. the yeah. And, uh, But yeah, uh, I, I Beetlejuice, I guess. Or that's not Beetlejuice, is it? That's um, uh, the one in the middle is Beetlejuice. Yeah, Beetlejuice. Yeah. Um, it's just, uh, yeah. I mean, everybody knows who she is because of that. Mm -hmm. And then the, I think the, la the bottom one's uh, Mars, Mars, Mars attacks, attacks. Yeah, Mars attacks. Yeah, which she that was, was sweet in that. Yeah, she was so old in that too. But yeah, I mean, you know, she was great in in Beetlejuice because she's she's just got that voice and and is able to portray an elderly ball buster like few people have ever mastered in cinema mm -hmm. and in this one she's sort of doing that too less effectively I mean, but that's the way the character was written why would they listen to this crazy old woman except that she's rich but they're rich anyway so you know she has she doesn't really give any compelling reason why she hates Damien because Damien's really not that bad a kid up to that point at least mm -hmm. at least we've been given no reason to right, think not that at all. He's been right. Not at all. Yeah, yeah. She just viscerally doesn't like him, and but but we're all going to buy it because we all saw the first movie, so we yeah know. we know we know we know. Like, we well, that's what it, one of the things Those eyes I had, followed us around. You know? One of the things I w wondered about was, um, you you almost think in some parts that Damien is unaware of oh, his, who totally he is unaware, yeah. and then and then at some points he's very much aware like when he confronts mark in the woods he knew exactly who he was yeah once, and, he, reads, uh, once he reads the bible yeah yeah uh, so there you go. maybe that was maybe that was it yeah he wasn't really why me he runs off yeah of it, yeah because yeah. yeah, he has that that one moment where he's he's all inner turmoil but he mm. and it goes by quick one little yeah it goes by real yeah, quick and then he a couple really... seconds yeah, a couple segments on the end of the pier, and he's all good there, with it. There really needed to be a scene where Satan or a demon or you know some, an angel or something, you know, confronts him and does the same tempting thing that was done with in, in, with Jesus. I mean, it's if you're going to make a biblical movie, if you're going to make a movie uh, a takeoff on on you know the Book of Revelations, get biblical. Yeah. You know, give us yeah. give us some supernatural stuff in there. Angels, demons, devils, whatever. Yeah. And and the problem was that there wasn't any Billy White Law, right? There wasn't that presence in this movie. Uh, I mean, we had characters that were in that shoes, but they did not achieve what Billy White Law. And of course, yeah. the crow doesn't replace those 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 dogs. The Rottweiler. Right? Yeah. Yeah. And um, so there's more people watching her, but. Um we don't really know it. And it isn't till towards the end that they kind of start giving each other glances like they're in on it yeah. together. Right. Right. Yeah. I mean, they uh, almost, they look more like they're having an affair than, you know, but, yeah. but, yeah. It, uh, but uh, yeah, so it really missed that element. Um, you know, like I'm, I'm going to leave her up because if she, if she was the Billy Whitelaw character instead, <laughs> that would have been pretty fierce. Um, mm. I don't know. I'm just thinking out loud, but yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, there's just some. Yeah. There's, oh. there's the guy under the, the twice. There's the cut in half. Yeah, and the uh, the, so the poor woman with a bird feed in her hair. Yeah, That's yeah. Like, and I liked her because uh, she was yeah. in Tomb of Lygia, very mm -hmm. very attractive woman. Yeah. Um, and that's a it. nasty way to go with that. And I gotta say, the bird scene, I remembered it, and I, I I was as I'm waiting for it to happen, I'm gonna like, okay, now we're gonna see her with the plastic bird attached to her hair. It's like, no, they. They oh, either right. used a really good puppet or a really well-trained bird. Yeah. yeah. That looked really good. Yeah. yeah. Crows and ravens have claws that will mess you up. Will do exactly what happened to her face. Yeah. 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 That this is actually a I mean, it's it scary, maybe not because of the way it's it's not shot in a scary way, but yeah. it's still tense. Um it's well, still they, Yeah, they did have a raven trainer, according raven to the trainer. producer. They had well, okay. Yeah. Yeah. I figured it was probably ravens, not crows, because ravens ravens are really smart, like scary smart on what you can train them to do. And yeah. yeah. This guy so. says, I'm done with this. I'm gonna go be on a sitcom. Yeah. I'm not <laughs> half the man I used to be. Oh, yeah. She was wearing red in Tumalagia too. Yeah. I mean that's yeah, I don't know what 
don't know what that producer was talking about. That red dress was awesome, and it. it I totally, thought it was. Yeah. Yeah, sold the scene. I mean, mm -hmm. you can't show as much blood as they probably wanted to show, but having that red dress just gave you that. Oh, oh yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe that was. Now I wish you included uh, Bill a picture of uh, Sylvia Sydney when she was younger because. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. She, she's she's like drop dead gorgeous. Mm -hmm. well, yeah. Listen. Uh, unless you were unless you were a dwarf or had acromegaly or something, they, I, these people were all gorgeous when they were young. Even mm -hmm. the dwarves were good looking. I mean, to get to break into Hollywood, you had to be gorgeous. Unless you were a comedian, a male comedian could be seriously ugly, ugly, you know. But all of these, you know, you see these actresses, and you may be used to. Oh yeah, she played the she played the old lady and whatever. But I guarantee, when she was in her twenties and thirties. Stopping clocks, gorgeous, you know. Well, so. yeah, the the cinematography on black and white pictures really they brought yeah. out they brought mm -hmm. out the looks. They're just some. I'm just looking at on IMDb of some, some of the. Them. It's just like uh, amazing. That's yeah, like um, yeah. like when you see uh, Elsa Lanchester when she's really oh young, yeah, you know, and, or or even um, uh, who's murder murder she murder wrote? she wrote. Uh, also, Angela uh, Angela Lansbury. Yeah. Angela. Yeah. Oh, oh Angela see, Lansbury. Yeah. Holy <sighs> cow. <sighs> Holy cats. Yeah. <laughs> Dang. Woman of Jeff's dreams. Oh yeah. <laughs> listen, <laughs> listen. Shelly Winters was hot. <laughs> Shelly Winters was oh, yeah. hot. Yeah, she was. Yeah. She really was. Yeah. 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 Um, her Reynolds, right? <laughs> Uh, okay, yeah. Night, and, William and Holden, night, handsome Night man. of the Hunter and Night of the Hunter, Shelley Winters. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. oh yeah. Mm -hmm. so. yeah. But you know, but yeah. and then you get older, and look, I'm not as good looking as I used to be. <laughs> not even close. And it, and I and I see where this road is heading, and it ain't any prettier. But uh, but I do, and I've always said that. I mean, I admire the people who, as they age, embrace the horror. And just play older characters. Don't don't be trying to, to hold on to something that you can't hold on to. There is always a steady crop of younger actors and actresses coming along. That's who they're going to hire, not mm. you, no matter how much money you spend on plastic surgery. Yeah. Just get used to playing 30 and 40-year-olds. Make friends. Here's a tip. Here's a tip if any of you are out there listening. Make friends with, friends with writers. Get Find a good writer. Become his best buddy. And make him a challenge. Hey, man, I'm 50 years old. Can you write a movie where, like, starring a 50 year old? I'll bet they can if they're a good writer. <laughs> I bet they can. Just uh, saying. But you gotta, you gotta. I was looking for that. friends. I'm, I'm looking for friends. Looking for friends. I'm a lonely man. <laughs> the 60s and 70s, people aged much faster. I mean, you yes, look at they, them, you're yes, like, they did. How old do you think he is? And the person, no. you know, it's like, you know, well, like they're. they're 50s and they're only like 30. They probably oh, yeah, lived pretty rough Holden. lives. Yeah. How old was William Holden think, when he died? Uh, like 59, I think. Or yeah, he maybe it was 59 in this movie and he was 61 when he died. Now, so how old is Tom Cruise right now? Older than we would well, think. I mean, he's, he's, uh, he's a he's a safe, he's, he's a theta. Yeah. yeah. Well, um, he's, he's got to be at least mid 50s. Yeah. yeah he's almost mid 50s. Yeah. Uh, You're right, Doc. But, but just think about this. What, um, I'm, I'm totally uh, blanking on his name all of a sudden because this came up today on something I was watching and um, was married to Angelina Jolie um, recently. Billy Bob, uh, Billy Thornton. Bob Thornton. No, the Billy other Bob one. Thornton. Yeah. The newer one. The Brad one Pitt. That, Brad Pitt. Oh, thank Brad, you. Yeah. Not Billy Bob Thornton, but Brad Pitt is is 57 was, years old. Yeah. Right. He does not look 57 years old. No. Right. No, he but if he if he was if he was fifty seven in the seventies, he'd look like he was close to eighty. Right. So. Right, because probably yeah. like like William Holden, he would have spent his career after when they said cut. That's a take for the day. Just retiring with his buddies and drinking gallons of whiskey and smoking, and, and smoking like a chimney and yeah. So. Yeah. It's, I don't I don't know why I went there, but. We, you know, my wife and I always notice that when we're watching these. Well, who, uh, Lou Ayers was looking. Actually, he looked pretty good for. He was probably the oldest guy there. The. No, wasn't this his last movie? Yeah, uh, I think wasn't he in Ghost Story? Oh wow! Hmm. Uh, this is the final cinema film from Lou Ayers. Yeah. Okay. He was not in Ghost Story. Ghost Story is a great movie. Oh yeah. 
which I did not like when it came out, but I came to love that movie over time. Yes, I, I'm the same way. I remember being I don't disappointed. Know, I, when I saw have it. no idea why I didn't like it. Looking well, at now it. we're closer in age to the people in the movie. So, you know, <laughs> yeah. before it yeah. was like, ah, look at these old people hanging around. It's like, now it's like, ah, oh, my brothers. Well, the whole, the whole well I think if, for me, it was the book was so magnificent that it was hard for a movie to live up to that. That's but, true. Uh, that's true. And, that's and, true. and time, has, time has been kind to that. So, yeah. yeah. So, uh, I, so am I wrong? Is, the, is it the cast that makes this movie or is it the kills? Um, because without I either, I think it's largely the cast. Yeah, the, the movie's garbage, right? Yeah, <laughs> because it doesn't have it doesn't it doesn't have the same suspense. The music isn't mm. up to snuff. Um, story wise, story wise, it isn't even right. Up yeah. to I, mean, I, I was kind of frustrated at the end, even though I enjoyed the movie. It's like I don't understand what the movie's you know what it was trying to do because there was no arc. Nobody. Yeah, you know, no, I mean, you're right. There is kind of an arc because Damien embraces his his future but you know you never it's, that, weak. it's not explained it's very weak yeah it's, there's yeah. not enough there's not enough um the, we've got two we've got two arcs damien embracing his destiny and william holden's character realizing what his son is but neither one is really well developed things just happen and they both suddenly you know flip to their you know come to the conclusion without a whole lot behind it so mm -hmm. yeah maybe they should Although, have stuck to just one or the other because yeah. in the first movie damien knew he was evil he knew he was evil that little bratty kid he was conceived he knew he was the devil from the get-go there was no, at every every point in the movie i never thought for a minute that he thought i'm just a little kid and bad things happen to the people around me no he was like i'm gonna knock mom off the banister with my tricycle Nope. But in this one, no, he's just a perfectly good kid playing Nintendo and whatever. And uh, I wanted to, you know, Nintendo, I, you... Yeah, I don't know what they did back then. <laughs> I don't I even remember. think he had Atari yet. Atari, uh, <laughs> ColecoVision, no, no, uh, Pong, whatever. They're playing Pong. Oh, yeah, they might have had Pong. Might have yeah, Pong. yep. <laughs> All right. Well, I think we should wrap this up. Let's go ahead and give our final thoughts what we think of this as a franchise. Uh, where the you know how this lives up and uh, move on with our lives. <laughs> <laughs> Chad, I, uh, you dive in first, sir. Give it, wrap it up for yourself. Um, it's just uh, like like I said at the beginning, it's a fun movie to watch, but as a, as far as a worthy sequel to the original, it, it just doesn't doesn't live up. It it's um, the characters. The yeah, the actors are good. It, they do have a good cast. But the story-wise, the characterization is very weak, and like we brought out before, the um, uh, the reasons why things were happening just there was just wasn't anything there. Um, so, but as far as kills go, and um, and I mean, yeah, it's it in that part, it's fun to watch. It's it's really fun to watch. Uh, but you know, it's not one I'm going to run out and watch again anytime soon i don't think but but it's uh i had a good time watching it this time okay i i, I will live with that i will live with that all right bill mulligan your turn um it's a movie that i wasn't that crazy about when it first came out and watching it this time i liked it more but now after talking to you guys i dislike it again no it's you no! know <laughs> it's listen it's it's a flawed picture but it's entertaining and, and now it makes me kind of want to watch the third one to see yeah. if, if that one lives up because it's got some good people in it too. It You feel like there's a lot of missed opportunities. Yeah. That they they, they should have gone bigger, but I guess that wasn't the plan. That was not the plan. Uh, yeah. But it's fun. It's definitely worth a look. Good cast. Good kills. Have a good time. Yep. Have a good time. All Better right. than Exorcist 2. That's for darn dude. Yeah. We're, we're, we're going to have to do that one at some point. Got it. Oh, wow. Yeah. We're going to have fun with that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, no. Uh, Jeff, more <laughs> your turn, sir. Wrap it up. I, um, hmm. <laughs> yeah, it's not, it's, it's not the omen, but it's, it's worth a watch. I, I think I like all the actors. I, there's a, a, good group of actors in this and the, the teenagers do a decent job. They do pretty good, pretty well. Um, I did want to mention a guy that we haven't talked about. And now I've got to look his name up again, because it's one of those names. I have a, uh, 
middle block about Fritz Ford. Fritz Ford. Fritz Ford. Fritz Ford was the chauffeur Murray. Oh. And he also was a stunt double for Chuck Connors in The Rifleman. Ah. He's a big guy. He's a tall yeah, guy. He actually had lines. Yeah, he did. And he turned <laughs> out to be in on the whole thing. Yeah, which we didn't get, ah, first, I don't think. That's right. Oh, yeah. that. that. Um, dude, yeah. But anyway, yeah, this this is fun, and there's some great kills in this. I mean, the the ice rink, the elevator, the crow or the raven, whatever, whatever, uh, and crazy. poor mommy. Well, it's a crow in the movie, I think, but the reality of it is, yeah. Um, anyway, yeah, I, I'm I'm okay, Doc. I'm not mad at you. No, <laughs> thank you, thank you. I appreciate that. Uh, yeah, I, this movie, it, I actually feared it was going to like be so much worse. <laughs> when I watch it again, because nah. I, it's it's been years since I I probably I probably haven't seen it since probably the mid nineties or something, like hmm. when like when the DVDs finally came out or something, and I don't know I can't tell you or it was on yeah who knows, uh, but I haven't watched it in ages, and I was like oh this is the I'm going to hate that I even said this was something we should watch, <laughs> but it it actually lived up it um I think it's it it's kind of given an unfair shake by history right by you mm -hmm. know timing by you know just comparison um and i i could see you know it, it's definitely there that if you saw this just years after seeing the omen you you could not like this movie <laughs> it just wouldn't live up right yeah. but separated by decades now um and uh, having a you know grown appreciation for other things then you know it just has to live up to the omen. Uh, there's, you know, it's 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 shot well. It's paced. The pacing's well. It's a short enough film. Uh, Damien, the uh, you know the, the lead lead boy is is, is holds his own. Um, it, it it you know it 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 has that pacing where, you know, five ten minutes, boom, somebody dies. Five ten minutes, somebody dies, and that's what you're there for. So it delivers. Yeah. Yeah, in that respect. So, um, yeah, it has just enough to to keep you on the thing. And uh, for some reason, I you know, for me, it's a cheese factor. I just love it um, for that fact, and uh, I'm glad we got to watch it. I'm glad it didn't disappoint me. Um, so take 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 all this with a grain of salt, and uh, let's know it's uh, available now on Hulu. Um, mm -hmm. And 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 Chad, I was looking for it on. HBO Max as well, and was like, where did it go? <laughs> but it was all yeah. okay. Uh, and uh, I, I had to go look it up on our our little app that we use. <laughs> where the hell is it? I know I saw it somewhere. Yeah, you know, I can go watch it on Hulu. Um, yep. All right. So there you go. That's our review of Omen Two. Uh, we'd love to hear what you think. If you are still with us, hanging out for this hour, listening us talk about the Omen Two. Mm -hmm. Uh, thank you so much. We appreciate yes. it. Here. Yes, uh, for sure. Uh, if you want to support us, you can do so very easily and for free. Just hit the like, um, hit the uh, subscribe button, even better, or share with a friend. Doing that does wonders. If you want to get a little bit more invested, you can subscribe, uh, hit the like button. See, I'm getting it backwards. Um, or give us some comments. We'd love to hear your thoughts on this movie uh, as well. Uh, and we also want to take a quick moment to thank our patrons. Uh, who, without their patronage, would you would not be able to do not only the various decades of horror podcasts that we do, but horror news radio, heroes and droids, and the gruesome magazine podcast. Um, that's eating up almost every hour of our week as we are producing these. <laughs> kind of amazing, uh, as uh, as we were talking before the show. Um, do we have uh, some feedback that we want to get into before we drop off of here? Or? Uh, we do. We have a we have a short one. All right, let's do it. For uh, gargoyles. Ooh, yeah. <laughs> scrolling, scrolling, scrolling. Okay. <laughs> now, this scrolling, is from scrolling, scrolling. Anthony Pereira. Yeah. Um, it's from Anthony Pereira, I think, is, would be the way to spell it, uh, pronounce it. We'll, we'll be sure to listen to this one, as I do with all DOH episodes. Still, when mentioning gargoyles, I think about this... I think about this show, the animated TV show. Uh, I got oh, the first two seasons yeah. Yeah. on DVD a while ago, and I haven't regretted it. I know there's been a release for the Goliath Chronicles, but have no desire to get it since it wasn't that great and was even yeah. considered non-canon from the series creator. 
Um, yeah. And I know we can't show it, but he gave us a giphy of the uh, animated gargoyles. It's a great show. It, a very, very well written, you know, mm -hmm. like something. It wasn't just for kids. Jeff. Kids could enjoy it. But yeah, I remember watching it and liking it quite a bit. And I'm sort of amazed no one's tried to make a live action version of it. Yeah. It seems like a natural. Give, give them time. Give them time. Yeah, they'll probably ruin it'll be it. On, it'll be on a streaming channel before 23, right? It'll be another one of those things where we say uh, the kids cartoon was more intelligently written than this. Oh! Yeah. It happens. <laughs> all right uh let's go ahead and get out of here guys uh chad what are we doing I, I have oh. a question first <laughs> i got the next pick ah so what's what is it well you have a choice oh. we have a choice oh boy night night of the devils by uh directed by giorgio ferroni anybody seen that no i Ooh. don't know that i have it's about a word of lack Ooh. Italian film or Eaten Alive. The Toby Hooper one? Yeah. Yep. No, I like that one. I do too. All right. Yeah. Eaten Alive it is. It's got uh, okay. Robert England. Yep. Yeah, Robert England. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I could read your mind. We're doing Eaten Alive next, folks. All right. Yeah. Eaten Alive. <laughs> All right, Chad, sir, Bill, Jeff, thank you for joining me. This was a lot of fun. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, it was. Thanks. As always. Thanks. Yeah. All right. Let's say good night. Good night. Good night, everybody. Good night. Gruesome Magazine.